It's easily one of the most iconic signs in Minnesota, and if you're driving through St. Paul, you can't miss the big red first sign on top of the First National Bank building. But have you ever wondered how it got there? In this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lauritsen goes to the top of the first for a history lesson. The stately, can't-miss building that towers over Minnesota Street is nostalgic up and down from the bank vaults in the basement. This is about a 40-ton assembly with the door and the frame. To one of the oldest skyways in North America. From the 16th floor over on the east side, and it walks down, interestingly enough, to the 17th story on the, on the west side. But it's at the very top, 32 floors up, where a recognizable beacon of red makes it stand. And this is kind of the uh, jewel in the crown, if you will. 403 feet up off the sidewalks. Oh, that's it. Just 400 and some feet. Just 400 and some feet. <laughs> the sign tower rises another 100 feet from the rooftop. Rick Rossi is with Madison Equities. They are the caretakers for the building, the sign, and the history. The Merchants Bank building opened in 1916. 15 years later, the first National Bank building was built next to it, connected by that famous skyway. Within a year or two of the opening of the building, they put the number one sign up there with the structure that you see today. It was a marketing ploy that worked. When the lights went out on the three-sided sign during the 1970s energy crisis, people took notice, and the bank president got an earful. He said that he fielded more calls about the sign being off in the 70s and early 80s than he did about just about any other topic. Like many of his friends, growing up, Dave Wickery used the first sign as a compass. When I was younger and exploring downtown, this is how I found my way around. Imagine if that first sign hadn't been there, how often you would have got lost. That's there. that's correct. You'd yep. still be wandering the streets, right? I probably would be. After it was damaged in a storm five years ago, the sign was converted from Depression-era neon lighting to LED lights. Now it shines from dusk until midnight. Pilots have reported seeing it from nearly 100 miles away. It's a nice place to go to step back from the day. From here, your 360-degree view includes the Capitol, the Cathedral, Minneapolis, and the Mississippi. That's cool how they still have that one up there. They better not take it down. It's a sentiment shared by many. Perhaps it's a sign that this landmark really is number one. They don't hesitate to give us a call if there's something wrong with the sign, so they feel a real, uh, somewhat of an ownership and, and a belonging to St. Paul. And uh, we, we hope to have the sign lit for many years to come. It's, uh, it, it really signifies home to a lot of people. In St. Paul, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. When the first National Bank building was built in the 1930s, it had to compete with the New York Empire State Building for materials. Well, thanks to the sign, it was St. Paul's tallest building until Wells Fargo Place went up in the mid-80s. It now houses a number of businesses that rent out space.